Hello and welcome. In a prior video, I once described the character Brother Power the Geek as a mannequin whose superpower was to inspire hippies to get jobs and to lead productive lives. And yeah, that's pretty dismissive, but it's also accurate. This character, created by the co-creator of Captain America, Joe Simon, is a fascinating example of a train wreck on paper. This was Simon's return to comics, having left the profession during the 1950s to focus on commercial artwork, and this return to the field is awkward and completely out of touch with the times. The original Brother Power series, which lasted all of two issues in 1968, is a mesmerizing mess of terrible, offensively bad writing. Let's put it this way. Brother Power, a literal mannequin, isn't the only straw man in the series. Hippies and bikers are portrayed through the distorted, simplistic lens of a middle-aged man who doesn't like the changes in society these groups represent. I mean, the hippies in this title have every stereotypical quality usually attributed to them. They're lazy, dirty, have no interest in being employed, and they protest things they barely understand. Because, you know, they're stupid, uninformed socialists. Again, they are nothing but straw men. One could try and argue that this is simply an absurd satire. At the time, DC did have a few titles that were somewhat similar in nature. But these titles were obvious satires, while Brother Power didn't feel like it was being played for laughs. The best thing I can say about this comic is, it's an interesting example of what the establishment, or those that represented the establishment, thought about the subculture that was rising up to replace them. With that in mind, the cancellation of this title after two issues has more than a little irony attached to it. Allegedly, Mort Weisinger, the powerful, well-established editor of the Superman comics line, hated Brother Power, and he lobbied the publisher to have it cancelled. Weisinger's objection was that the hippies were being portrayed with too much sympathy. Yeah, that middle-aged guy thought the other middle-aged guy was going too easy on the subculture they both thoroughly loathed, allegedly. Regardless, Brother Power the Geek would become one of the characters in the DC Universe that would perpetually languish in obscurity. In fact, following the cancellation of the series in 1968, Brother Power wouldn't show his face again until 1985. And that appearance was a one-panel, non-sequitur in the Ambush Bug Stocking Stuffer special. However, in the following year, Brother Power would return again, and then quickly fade away. In the early days of his career, Neil Gaiman wrote a Brother Power story for the fifth Swamp Thing annual. Originally, this was intended to be the first story Gaiman would do following Rick Veitch's run on the regular Swamp Thing series, but Veitch quit the series due to an editorial decision and, in a show of solidarity, Gaiman declined to write the series. The Gaiman story is decent and captures the spirit of the original character without all the obvious anti-hippie sentiments inherent to it. Brother Power is a symbol of a more innocent time. He represents an ideal that could never work. I would also suggest that Gaiman's portrayal of Brother Power is a rough first draft of the Delirium character he would use in the Sandman series. I mean, I wouldn't argue with this point too hard, but I believe I see some similarities between the two. After a background appearance in the 1989 Blaster special, Brother Power was on track to get a new, ongoing series in 1992, but this series never materialized. In the following year, 1993, Brother Power had a one-shot Vertigo comic written by Rachel Pollock and illustrated by Michael Allred. This comic went in an entirely different direction with the character, deciding to focus on the geek aspect of the character, specifically a circus geek. To be honest, I don't actually see the point of this comic at all. But to be fair, Rachel Pollock's writing has never appealed to me, so yeah. Brother Power had a quick background appearance in Kingdom Come No. 2 in 1996, and he appeared in name only in the Tangent Comics title, The Joker. In 1999, during the three-issue Conjurers miniseries, Brother Power again appeared in name only as a character that doesn't even remotely resemble the previously established character. The next year, Brother Power made a cameo in the Vertigo Comics one-shot, Totems, and then he fell back into obscurity until 2010. Oddly enough, his two final appearances to date were in The Brave and the Bold. The first appearance being a brief role in the All Ages cartoon tie-in version of the title, and the second being a more serious attempt to examine the character that has literally existed in the margins of the DC Universe for over 40 years. This final appearance, to date, expands on the concept that Gaiman suggested in 1986. Brother Power is an elemental that will recur when necessary, basically. 
But more to the point, the idealism of the era he represents is stripped away, or burned away to be more accurate, and he is left at a point where he can finally evolve into something more, should anyone else wish to progress the character forward. For the first time since his inception, Brother Power, the naive, non-ironic, frozen-in-time embodiment of flower power, escapes the biases of its inception. And really, it's the first time since Gaiman that anyone approached the character seriously and tried to find a place for it within the DC Universe. In the end, Brother Power the Geek has been the jokey punching bag of the DC Universe for almost 50 years. Deservedly so, considering the inspiration and intention of the character when it first appeared. But I would also suggest, Brother Power has been an embarrassment to anyone who suggests that the comic book genre be taken seriously. Worse yet, he's indefensible. He's a character that not only embodies a distorted view of the 60s, but he also embodies the worst characteristics of the comic book genre. He represents the misperception that comic books are idiotic, poorly written, juvenile propaganda. Certainly, Brother Power the Geek is not the only example of this misperception. However, he is one of the most enduring ones. If I could have another moment of your time, I would like to ask that if you enjoyed this or any other Overlord Comics content, that you support this channel by subscribing. This ensures you're notified of additional content as it's made available. Liking, commenting, and sharing is also a very fine way to show your support. Thank you for your time, and I will talk at you in the near future. Until next time.